Amen. How many of you all know that we serve a big God? Amen. Y'all go ahead and stand up this morning. Let's go ahead and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Can y'all praise him this morning? Yep. Gretchen, LaShawn, Cain. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 There's a song that says, with every beat of my heart, I will praise him. Woo. My, my, my. See, one thing I'm not going to do is stop the spirit from moving Because somebody's going to get released in here today There is going to be a release in the atmosphere In your spirit today Thank you, Jesus Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father God, we thank you in this place. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. Father God, I'm asking God that you let Gretchen die and you have free course with her. Create her right now to be the vessel for you, God, and have your way. And let somebody in this place, God, release their spirit just like you said. We here to give you glory. We here to give you honor. We give you we here to give you praise. All goes to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I'm gonna be coming from First Samuel, chapter one. I'm going to read verses one through six, then verse ten, and then verses nineteen through twenty. And the word of the Lord reads, Now there was a certain man, a Ramathim, Zephim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elahu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zeph, and Ephraim. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penah. And Penana had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penana his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore. For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. 
verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Verses 19 and 20. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she had bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Y'all can be seated in this place. Today, my assignment from God is to encourage someone who has a condition, and you have let your condition determine your outcome. Today is your day to get a, day, a release, a release in your spirit. Condition meaning your state of being and how your state of being has held you captive. And my topic, if I could take for one, my condition is not my conclusion. See, I want to speak from the passage of scripture that we all are familiar with concerning Hannah, the mother of Samuel, the judge and the prophet. As we all know that Hannah's condition caused her not to bear any children. The Bible does not specify how long Hannah was barren, but according to the Midrash, a form of rabbinic literature that offers interpretation of biblical text states that Hannah was barren for 19 years. Hmm. Just imagine, saints, if you had a condition just that long, mm. and you was picked on, you was laughed at, or even provoked. See, Hannah's condition was humiliating and shameful because in those days, childbearing was very important to married women. We have to understand that Hannah's condition could have caused Hannah to lose her husband. My Lord. Even though Elkanah loved Hannah and gave her a double portion, that didn't stop Hannah from feeling some type of way. Y'all know what I'm talking about in here today. You have people in your life today that encourages you, but you still feel a certain type of way with your condition. Many of us today, our condition has us so bound, so locked up in our spirit that we can't even give God a praise. We can't even release a praise because we're so bound up and locked up in our spirit. Our condition has us saying, I got the high blood pressure, so today I can't do it. See, our condition got us saying, I got arthritis in my legs, so you know what, I just can't do it today. See, remember now, our condition is our state of being. So I stubbed my toe, Lady Z, so I can't give God a praise because it hurt it since last week. Hmm. They made me mad, so I can't. I got a headache, so I can't. Can I go a little bit further? I overheard them talking about me, about what I had on. So you know what, today I just can't do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it next week. I'm still talking about Hannah and her condition, but I wanted to come down your road just a little bit. Stop saying that I came and tell your neighbor my condition ain't my conclusion. Hey, come on, somebody. See, understand that Hannah was picked on and Hannah was provoked by Panana, but that still didn't stop Hannah from offering God a praise. Come on, somebody. Not only didn't it stop Hannah from offering up God a praise, it didn't turn her heart hard. It didn't turn her heart ugly. The Bible says she was bitter. But see, sometimes when we're bitter, when we're upset, guess what? We want to take it out on the next man. See, but what I loved about Hannah, even though she was bitter, the Bible says, she might have been upset, but she gave Eli the most respect. Mm, she gave Eli the most respect. Let me go a little further. Most of us could only give God a praise when we have money in the bank. Most of us can only give God a praise when everybody is our friend. Y'all know what I'm talking about in here. But Hannah gave God a praise and a prayer even with her condition. Hmm. How many of us can give God a praise with your condition? How
How many of you can give God a praise with the state of mind that you in? How many of you can still give God a praise even if you stubbed your pinky toe? How many of you still can give God a praise even if you got a headache? How many of you can still give God a praise even if your body ache? How many of you still can give God a praise? Can't ache in our vocabulary because my Bible said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, I'm not only talking to you in here, but I'm talking to whoever is watching. Today, God said, a release going to come in your spirit today. See, Hannah's condition kept her crying, broken, and in the presence of God. <laughs> tell me. See, let me tell you what we do, people of God. We go to our friends that can't help us. We go to our neighbors that can't help us. And then when we get to God, our condition done worsen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You at home and you're sick. And you really can't get out of the bed. You don't want to call 911, but I want to call my sister that live across town. And no good and well, she can't get to you. All she can do is offer up a prayer. But I'm talking about somebody that you needed to go to in the beginning. His name is Jesus. See, we, we make him the last resort. See, when we make him the last resort, our condition got worse. And then we want to blame everybody in the world because our condition got worse. But it ain't nobody fault but your own. Just like in your spirit. If you don't went to God first, guess what would have happened? You would have had a release. You wouldn't have had to worry about nothing. But we make God our last choice. We make God our last choice. And when we make him our last choice, guess what God's going to do? When you finally come to God, he's going to sit there and say, oh, you made it? You finally made it. Hmm. See, in Genesis 18 and 12, Sister Sarah laughed. Y'all can look it up when, when, when you get out of here. <laughs> Yo, she did, Pastor. See, she laughed at the angel's proclamation that God would give her a child. Her faith was waved. How many of us in here faith is waved today? How many of us laugh at the simple things? How many of us laugh at something that God told you? How many of us laugh because some, a man or a woman of God done came to you and said something to you? How many of you done laughed? How many of you done laughed? If you didn't laugh out loud, I know you laughed in your spirit. See, we can't see what you got going on the inside. See, but God said, I know your heart. I know what you're doing. I know what you would do, and I know what you won't do. And you did it. I'm just going to tell you, you did it. But in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, see, we would have told Sister, Sister uh, Sarah today, Trust in the Lord, Sister Sarah, with all thy heart, Sister Sarah, and lean not to your own understanding, Sister Sarah. Hallelujah. But in all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. See, she didn't acknowledge God. She laughed at God. Come on. She might as well laugh at God. She laughed at the angel that God sent. She didn't trust in him. See, but one thing about Sister Hannah, Hannah trusted in God. Hannah said, I'm not even going to tell nobody. I'm not going to tell my neighbor. I'm not going to tell nobody, not even my husband, what I'm going through. Because if you look back in the text, he said, ain't I better, ain't I better than 10? Not when you got a condition. Not when you're dealing with something. No, you ain't better than 10. Only person that's better than 10 right now is the God that I serve. I love your husband, but God is better. Come on, somebody. See, we got to take that type of attitude. I, I love you, mama, but hallelujah, I, gotta, I got to worry about God. God got to deal with my condition. Because all you can do right now, mama, for me is pray. And that's, that's what Elkanah did. He went and offered a prayer. He went up and offered for her. Nobody would have known what she was going through. But why is it today everybody know what we're going through? Everybody look at your face and say, oh, she's going through something. She's going to be on the altar today. Oh, y'all know they, that's what they be saying. I don't care what I'm going 
going through. I'm going to walk into the house of the God with my head held high. Because the God that I serve was the same God that brought me to that condition. It's the same God that's going to bring me through that condition. So I dare not. Hallelujah. Give God praise even in my condition. I dare not. Give God all I got with my condition. Stop talking about it and do something about it. The best praise. See, the best praise is when you walk up in here and you ain't got to worry about nobody because you ain't taking nobody home with you but the Lord. Come on and talk about it. You ain't going to take nobody home in here but the Lord. And if you're taking people in here home with you, something is the matter. Because if you read the scripture, it says come up to the altar. And you make sure you leave them on the altar. And you got to go back out, not the same way you came in. Come on, somebody. You're bound up and you're locked up in your spirit. And that's why you can't release the praise today. Hmm. So that's what we're going to tell Sister Sarah. But she laughed. If you trust in the Lord with your heart and lean not to your own understanding, because she was leaning to her own understanding because she was old in age and she didn't think she could have children. She must have really didn't know the God that we served. She couldn't have. Hmm. See, you might feel like your condition has gotten the best of you, but today I'm coming to tell you, God is setting you up for the win. See, right there, see that right there is where I got my joy when he ministered to me. He said, because I done set you up for the win. See, he set Sister Hannah up for the win, too. Hallelujah. See, but uh, Sister Hannah knew the assignment. See, understand that God has chosen you to bear the weight of your condition, not to humiliate you. Not to make you feel ashamed, but to show people that I, God, did it. I got the conclusion to your condition. See, God knew you was qualified and able to fit the profile that he was looking for in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Because it said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you. You're a prophet of the nation. So before you know about your condition, God knew about your condition. God, come on somebody. Ha. Jesus had a condition. Jesus had a condition. If you read the word of God, his state of being, he was in a condition. Hallelujah. He stayed the course and finished the race. If he didn't finish the race, where would we be? But you come into the house of God, bound up in your spirit, and locked up in your spirit, and can't release a prayer. Today, you're going to be free. Today, you're going to get free. See, he ran the race. He still prays and worshiped God. See, Hannah prayed her way through. Hannah prayed her way through. She, she didn't do all that stuff we do. And I thought the Bible was for us to go into, to pan after for right today. Because there's nothing new under the sun. It's in scripture. So Hannah prayed her way through. What y'all gonna do? I had to roll my neck on that one. What y'all gonna do? In my closing, 1 Samuel 2 and 21 says, and the Lord was gracious to Hannah. Gracious to Hannah. She gave birth to three sons. Three. Did the scripture not say in the beginning that she was barren? And did the scripture not say that she couldn't have no children? Did the scripture say that Hannah was barren? She couldn't bear children. Hallelujah, but look at God. See, the thing about this race is, if you stay the course, if you keep your mind focused on the most high God, I come to tell you in this place today, won't he do it? <laughs> Not only did Hannah have three sons, 
she, he, she had two daughters. Come on, somebody. See, meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. But today I come to tell you, God said someone in here is locked up and someone is bound up in their spirit. And today is your day to get a release in your spirit. If you don't get a release in your spirit, then guess what? That's nobody fault but your own. But God has placed you in position to release in this place today your condition unto him. Hmm. See, your condition ain't no match for God. Hmm. See, you don't know what somebody has been going through. You don't know what somebody else has been going through. All you know is you see them on Sunday. You may see their face on Bible, or on Bible study. You may, if they got their camera on. But you're going to hear their voice. They're going to be in the background saying, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Or they're going to be talking. One or the other. But you're going to hear their voice. And just like you hear each one another's voice, we got to listen and hear the voice of the Lord. We got to get in the place where we can hear God speak. We got to get into position to where that condition that we have, God already knew. You didn't know, but God did. So with your condition, what you gonna do? I heard the Lord say, I am bigger than your condition. I am better than your condition. Can I go a little further? He said, I command your condition. See, when God commands something, it happens. But God gave you the power and the authority to tread over scorpions. So you need to command that condition. Well, unless you ain't got no power. You already ain't got no peace. You ain't got no peace. So don't put them together. God is offering it to you. He offering you power and peace. You know what, Sister Hannah had peace and she had power because she trusted in the Lord with her heart. She, she knew that the God that she served was going to do it. She didn't know when, she didn't know how, but she knew that God was going to do it. See, Sarah thought she was too old, but ain't nothing hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. Sister Hannah understood the assignment. Do you understand your assignment? Do you understand your assignment? Do you understand the assignment? He already said that I knew you. Before you were born, I formed you. So he formed you knowing that you were going to have a condition. He formed you knowing, he ordained you knowing, he sanctified you knowing that you were going to have a condition. So are you going to let your condition continue to hold you hostage or are you going to do something about your condition? Are you going to do something about your condition? Are you going to let God have his way? Are you going to tell God all about it? See, because he's just waiting for you to talk to him. Just like you talk to your neighbor. Just like you talk to your friends. Just like you talk all the time at work. But guess what? The God that I serve. See, I got to take my time and I got to talk to him. I got to talk to him about it. Because if I talk to y'all about it, ain't nothing going to happen. Nigga, that word, I can't. I can't. I can't. But God could. Know that God could. And God will. God will. The Bible tells me that God was gracious to Sister Hannah. So what makes you think that he won't be gracious to you? Today is a day to get a release in your spirit. Today is to get a release in your spirit. You don't have to worry about nobody else's spirit. Worry about your spirit on today. Because you got to take your spirit home, not your neighbors. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on and give God a hand type of praise. Come on and give God a hand type of praise. Come on and give God a hand type of praise. See, the problem is we like to be locked up. If you want to be locked up, go on and out there and do something crazy and you'll get locked up. Let your spirit be free today. Let 
your spirit be free today. Stop holding on to something that you can't change. Let God do it for you. Come on, somebody. Stop trying. Stop giving the devil victory. Stop giving the devil reign over your spirit. Because the God that you serve, he going to do it for you, but you got to want him to. He going to do it for you, but you got to let him do it. Oh, come on, somebody. I ain't come to pump and prom you. Not today. Today is not that day. But what I came to do is give you the word from the Lord. Because God said, if you just fulfill your assignment, you're going to have victory. Do you truly want victory in this place on today? Come on, do you want victory in this place on today? Do you want victory?